Hey everyone, welcome back to Sky Pie News. So we are finally covering the eruption of the Hunga Tonga volcano and as being known as like the largest eruption that has been seen from space. And then we'll also be covering the big Fort Myers EF2 tornado that went through there, started as a water spout, but continued as a strong tornado on there. And Amber also, Sister Pi here also has an event that she just added to the dock today. So what's going on there? Fresh off the press, we have hardly had any snow in Colorado this year, but today we got enough to make ice and have a multi-car pileup just south of us here. Um, they're not even saying how many cars yet, so we'll probably be finding that out as we continue this podcast today. Yeah, I was, I was driving out as it was snowing this morning that I uh, sold a, a car stereo today and I was taken to the post office, yeah, but it really wasn't I, that bad. I mean, I left it like 9 a.m. Why didn't you go film it? Because you've gotten cars smash into each other. I'm not so always sure wanted, I would want to be out I've there. I've always wanted that footage. Oh, goodness. <laughs> like, I don't know about that. So that's something we can talk about all that later. But anyway, let's no, jump no. right into this um, Hunga Tunga Hunga Hayapai <laughs> volcano. And so, but first, let's put it into perspective. Let me pull up an older episode of that we've got here from the um, La Palma eruption. And I just want to show you, I'm sure you all have seen this eruption on satellite now, but this is, oh, of course, this is what my bookmarks bar, the bookmarks bar always disappears right when you need it. Show bookmarks bar. Okay, anyway. Okay, YouTube Creator Studio. I don't even know that. Yeah. Uh, Let me get this up here. Not, yeah. You got a screen share still. Yeah, I know, but let me pull it up here first. Um. All right, all right. <laughs> now, Pi has been a little excited about this volcano. He has been watching videos every day. Oh, the last goodness. Weeks. It's been tough to decide on what to show because it's been so, um, there's been so much content out there. And quite frankly, there are a lot of YouTube channels that have done a way better job at covering them, but I will be sharing those so that you guys can check them out and maybe even subscribe to some of them. So anyway, um, here is our live stream of the La Palma eruption here. <laughs> there's two Ambers, but um, anywho. So hey, here- what am I, what are you <laughs> So Never. here's the island of La Palma here. I am on the Mesosat 11 geostationary satellite. And let me scoop up here. Right there, that little red dot is the blip of the eruption. Just that tiny little thing. You'd probably be able to see, depending on the day, a little bit of a stream of La the Palma. eruption there. So Yeah, you really couldn't see anything on La Palma. I tried and tried, but... So anyway, let's pull this up on here. So these were some screen captures when the the Ram Beep Slider Colorado State, whatever website this is. And Amber, you were the one that found it. Where, where did you find this website from? Uh, this is from uh, Daddy Pie. <laughs> oh, Daddy, Daddy Pie. Daddy Pie was, <laughs> sent this to us. Um, he's a geologist, so I don't know how he came across it, whether it was one of his geology websites, yeah. but by far my favorite. I love to go on a Go 16. It's only, I'm guessing, two to three your, hours behind live. Your time. webcam is off. My webcam is, oh yeah, I turned it off because there were two of me. Um, <laughs> what? But <laughs> Thanks a lot. <laughs> okay, so, well... Uh, now she just hung up. Anywho, so let's continue on here and show some of this. So I zoom in a little bit. So here's the whole planet. This is awesome because you get to see the full disk of the satellite that's I'm way here. out I'm, there. I just pushed the wrong button. Uh -huh, I, I know you did. 
So I was back before you even said I was back. Right here <laughs> is where he zoomed in, and the eruption just starts out modest. It looks kind of cool. You can get, see the shock wave. These are 10 minute intervals. So this is a really fast time lapse here, and it just gets giant. You can see a big cumulus tower here, and oddly enough, most eruptions are more gray, and this one tended to be more white, and I'll explain that here in a bit as I go through the time lapse. And this was amazing because typically it's tough to see good detail in clouds during the daytime. However, at sunset and sunrise, you just get so much definition here. And you can, because the shadows really show the scale of this. Let me zoom in a little bit. Ooh, not that much. And, uh, <laughs> okay, how about 75? I recorded this in 4K, so there's plenty of it to go around. And But yeah, so I think you get an idea just of the size of this thing here. And well, the islands the islands just disappear under that. Yes. So there um, is land, but they're gone. Yeah, it's so gone. here is the Himawari Himawaya, Him Him <laughs> satellite. <laughs> They caught it over there. And so I zoom in in a sec here. This is all screen capture. So I got to fast forward through it and dink. So yeah, let's just um, first focus on the angle of this and then I'll point. Oh yeah, here's the island right there. That's the island. <laughs> so that's the one that you've been hearing about. That's the one where the volcano apparently severed the internet connection, the main internet line that the whole island uses. So it took forever before we started seeing like tsunami footage, for example. Which is under the ocean. It's like an actual yeah. water that someone laid under the ocean to give them internet. It's mm -hmm. pretty impressive. Yeah. And so that thing is just giant. When I woke up to this thing, I just couldn't believe how large this was. So, and like, here's the island still. Like this thing just kept going over them. And so, and you can just see the shock wave irradiate from them. But anyway, so I've got a timeline put together and so I'm going to start going through that. And so here's a video that I'll share the link of with you that is posted on the NASA Goddard YouTube channel. And this actually talks about the birth of the island. I think this is the right way. Yeah. Hunga Tonga, Hunga Hayapai. <laughs> so, <laughs> so this is a great story. It's not just footage here. I'll, I mean, I'll scrub through it, but you guys should totally... Um, check this out because it's super fascinating seeing how this island first spawned up out of the Pacific, right? Ocean. Pacific Ocean. Yeah. It, so that's when it first popped up. And then here's a really cool time lapse also by um, the same YouTube channel here where they took satellite imagery and they used 3D topography to show that's it. That's cool. So... This, yeah, so starting in February here, I will. And that's before, obviously. Yeah, these videos were posted before the eruption. So, it's and this is good. really cool because you can just see how the erosion is just eroding away at it. Here, let me move my camera so that you can see the date. Wee. And... Wee. It's all just a pile of ash, you know? It's just, it's collapsing. Mm -hmm. That's cool. Yeah, so it, I love how the lake just turns into a nice green as well. And so this is with the evolution. So definitely an active volcano. It would erupt every now and then. And so that's what... Um, so there's a bit of um, context to what was happening here. And in June 20. 20, I found this video posted by the Golden Glow Catamaran sailing around the world. So these are just some vloggers just doing their own thing. And so here's some drone footage that they've got of the volcano. And so they just go over it and you can just see the lush green from, he says, from all the minerals of the volcano. 
And so here they're just like, you know, sitting on there, just like completely oblivious that uh, a couple of years later that this thing was just going to make the biggest eruption that at least the biggest eruption that I've personal that I've been alive for. So, uh, yeah, I wouldn't want to be sitting there on the rim like some of those people you showed earlier. Mm -hmm. are doing. And, no, no. Yeah, no, no. <laughs> And of course, we know what we know what the volcano is about to do. They didn't know exactly what the volcano is about to do. Right, Ooh, right. Seven. So let's see. Let me pull up. So here is the Tonga Geological Services Facebook page. And so let me scroll through here because this also gives a good timeline of the whole thing. And then we'll work our way back up through it and uh january 3rd so it, they start getting some activity and i thought i had actually some oh yeah here it is um so here's some drone footage from this guy here of it erupting back in the 30th so it's been going for quite a while even before this big one here and back so, on december 30th yeah, this is december 30th okay. so about a, a month ago at this point. So, and he got some great drone footage here. So you guys should check this out and check the whole thing. I just love how it's all in such slow motion and the ground is, or the ocean is just, has some interesting colors and everything going through it. And I presume from all the minerals and stuff. And so here you can see some contrast. So here is the gray ash that we're typically used to seeing from eruptions. And however, we also have this white gas. This is all just vaporized water that is, um, that's just, you know, basically making a cumulus cloud there. So, and so finally, um, so that, the Tonga Geological Service is going through this. They're they're monitoring like the you know the part that's sticking out of the ground and whatnot. And so, um, and so they they've instituted zones. You got to stay such and such far away from the volcano. And uh, let's see, where's that timeline? Large eruptions. So I've got some of this copied and pasted here. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, the, is this it? Ah, oh, darn it. Over the <laughs> over three days had passed with no further detected volcanic activity from Hung uh, Volcano. Okay, so that was on the seventh. Six days, no activity detected. So January 9th, it's starting to calm down, and. Uh, this is hilarious. Seven days with no further eruption from the Hunga volcano. It is now declared dormant. So they actually, on January 10th, declared this volcano dormant. And so I was watching a YouTuber, um, Scott Manley, and he normally does space stuff, but he covered this because, you know, it's like a huge eruption on the... Um, on the you know, scene from space, whatnot. And so, but they haven't been able, you know, the, the country of Tonga isn't, doesn't have much money and they haven't been able to afford, you know, multi-thousand dollar uh, <laughs> volcanic sensors and stuff. So they've got nothing to go by. Well, is it erupting today or not? And so after a week, they're like, okay, I guess it's dormant now. So, yeah, so that was hilarious. And so I've got a whole timeline here in the doc from this Facebook page, Amber. And so... Yes, I'm ready. Yeah. Large eruptions from the Hunga Tonga, Hunga, Hiapai, on both the January 14th and 15th produced plumes that reached the stratosphere oh, and caused significant regional effects. Oh. Activity on the 14th. Yeah, continue, sorry. Apparently removed approximately the mi the middle third of the island that had been expanded over the previous weeks. Revealed by Planet Lab image required on at 1525 on the 15th of January. About two hours after that image was taken, an even stronger eruption produced a stratospheric plume seen in the satellite images. Sent pressure waves 
across the atmosphere and caused a tsunami that traversed the Pacific. Following these explosions, a sentinel image acquired on the 17th of January showed that most of the previous combined island had been destroyed, leaving only small parts of the northeast island of the Hunga Tonga. Yeah, so this is all the bigger it is now. So, um, January 25th, during a 14 January... Oh, no, wait, is that what it was before? That may have been what it was before, because January 14th is what they're saying. Um, Anyway, continue. uh, The image image came on January 17th Mm -hmm. that showed that most of the previous combined island had been destroyed. Mm Mm-hmm. Um, the southwest island of Hunga yeah, Hayapai above the ocean surface, a subaerial eruption that began at 420 on the 14th of January, produced a mushroom-shaped ash steam and gas plumes that rose as high as 65,600 feet or 20 kilometers into the stratosphere and expanded readily at the top of the plume at 240 kilometers in diameter. According to the Tonga Geological Service Services, geologists observing from a boat about 1500 to 1830 in the afternoon noted that the plume was about five kilometers wide at its base. It's interesting. Um, the cert cyan pulses, if I'm pronouncing that right, ejecting dark, dense material into the air and the pyroclastic flows expanding over the ocean. The eruption plume drifted over the island groups of Tonga Tonga Tapu uh, now they're going into city names that I won't be able to pronounce carrying an estimated sulfur dioxide mass of 50,000 tons based on the satellite well, TONES, not tons TONES <laughs> um, data. Sulfur odors scrolling down the page here were reported in the city of Tonga Tapu <laughs> Sorry, people near the capital of Morotapu Island and on Iha. Yeah, we need to go world traveling so we know how to pronounce all these places. <laughs> Asphalt was reported on many islands, including um, the island of Mongo and Fanoi. Let's skip all these names here. Yeah, Let's feel free to skip it. It's long. TMS residents warn residents to stay away from the low laying coastal areas, beaches, and harbors. Due to the tsunamis. Um, yeah, how many days did it take to get some footage of the tsunamis? It was probably the 17th. Well, we had some here in the U.S. that came out pretty quick, but... Well, yeah, that makes oh sense. Goodness, I meant look there at in this. Tonga. So this is the eruption before the big one. So I believe this was January 14th. And so this is when the survey was out or the, the Tonga Geological Survey was out there. And so I posted the link in the chat. And so this was before the big one, the big one that just created the tsunami. So this was the day before. It and, looks unearthly. It's I just... know this like it's something that like this looks cinematic to me. And like, look at this. This is like. It even has like an inflow tail cloud where it's like um, the updraft is just sucking in some moisture into it. So um, I heard somewhere that, or there was a YouTube channel, the Geolo- Geology Hub. He's been posting some great videos about these eruptions. And he was saying that it pretty much is like technically considered a supercell here. <laughs> Because it made so much lightning, too, apparently, during the eruption as well. Like, look at this thing. It's ginormous. Colton is saying in our um, feed here that... Kelton. Sorry, Kelton, not Colton. (laughs) Uh, That there is some consensus that the steam explosion from the seawater interacting with the magna near the surface resulted in the eruption plume being so large. Yeah, yeah. So let me show, let me introduce you to this YouTube channel here, um, Geology Hub. And uh, uh, because you guys should totally check out if you'd like to go in it, because he goes way, he's really concise about it. He's kind of got a very monotone voice, but um, he's super specific, super detailed, and he shows tons of graphs and data. He also shows a lot of stock photos, especially the same ones over and over again. But yeah, he's got a great series of videos. He uploads one a day. And so he was saying that, um, to further Kelton's point here, is that some seawater, um, because there was a caldera that collapsed and we're only seeing like a part of it, 
like the couple of isle yeah. islands is just like one um side of the caldera and so the the prevailing theory is that seawater seeped down into the volcano where it started to heat up and expand and then eventually explode so when there was just so much pressure built up so who knows some water may have even seeped down in there got sealed down in there um as the eruptions were progressing and then eventually just burst on its own so yeah these video clips you probably have seen these all over the news but if you want to check out just the the original um the original video here like this stuff is just amazing and yes show us some high resolution after plays uh, just what these guys got here. And I'm really glad that it didn't decide to explode like this with them being so close because that would have bla- Oh, that lightning Damn. strike. Oh, jeez. Man. Don't they, isn't there another term for that as a dirty thunderstorm? It's I'm not sure. Ash. It's at least with the weather channels. I know no. they have their own channels. But mm -hmm. it makes sense because it's not your typical air, water, that was cool. Yeah. yeah. You wouldn't want you. They said sometimes these pyroclastic flows. Uh, we were watching a special recently where a village was running away from one of these, and they said it was 50 miles an hour, like that cloud. Look at the striations in that. You usually only see striations like that under like a photogenic supercell. So. 60,000 feet in the atmosphere. That's incredible. 66,000. 67. Uh, forgot what I read earlier. Mm -hmm. Anywho, um, I just realized I need to cite the the thing that the article that I was having you read. It's from this website, but um, I was unable to find the article again after I copied and pasted it last week. Whoopsie. Volcano.si.edu. Yeah, this is the same place that we saw the um, that we looked into the La Palma stuff. So, well, there's that. I'm sure it's somewhere on there. Guess I could have used this <laughs> site volcano <laughs> profile. Anywho, <laughs> all right, so moving on, and... Uh, so, yeah? Any idea what, how they classify a volcano as dormant? Like, I get it that it has had zero activity in seven days, but there's got to be some kind of by-the-book, textbook... Well, yeah, I think, I think a lot of those are generally including sensors and seismograph data and gas measurements which they haven't <laughs> apparently they can't afford to do that there so because um in america you know with our such large populations and of course a lot of um funding to go around to, to such research i'm sure there's a way to classify it with more data so but it kind of makes you wish we had go 16 back in 1980 <laughs> before you and i were born mm -hmm. when mount st helens exploded just so we could see what that looked like mm -hmm. on satellite now maybe there's i don't know was there any satellite imagery from back then we only see like yeah. actual pictures of it so anyway uh sorry I ignore this particular clip this was um the daily wire mistakenly included this video clip it's from a different tsunami so do not take much heart in it however this is the best story that i found of the tsunami that impacted Hunga here. So they go in and they pulled so many clips uh, from the island, uh, the Kingdom of Tonga. And so I'll just scrub through it a little bit here. But they tell a really great story of all the tsunami clips that um, impacted the island. So here's this one. I'm sure that you've seen a lot of these clips here. And so at least it wasn't like a super high tsunami. So like if we take a look at this image here, it looks like the tsunami made it up only to about here. So it may have been still three impressive. meters high, but you can see how covered the island is in ash. There's just like, there's like more green in the ocean here than there is in the trees. And so here's some of the satellites that were after it. So, oh goodness. Yeah, so it, this is nothing like the tsunami that hit Japan um, that impacted the, um, or, or the nuclear power plant. Yeah. 
World War II tsunamis were massive. Yeah. So I would highly recommend you check out. They did a great job with this video, and as um, they've put together a lot of clips as well. And then here's one. This isn't a very good quality video. Fortunately, I didn't have time to, to try to track down the original. But so this is apparently that it was, um, I don't even know where this is um, taken from. So, but this is definitely one of the islands, maybe New Zealand and, um, or maybe a closer island of the sonic boom of it here. So they, they know it's coming. So the eruption must have happened at some point recently in this video. I'll go ahead and cite it here. Um, this particular YouTuber. Yeah, I was it to amazed. Extreme Pursuit. I was amazed by this video that you couldn't see the plume because the mm -hmm. sound is so loud. For sure, you could see the volcano on the horizon. Mm -hmm. It doesn't appear to be. Oh. Holy shit! <laughs> yeah, so that was uh, uh, quite the bang. And a sonic boom? Well, okay, it may be different. It may sound different than a sonic boom, but. Ah. Holy shit! Uh, uh, not that far. Oh, oh there he is. Oh, holy sh There we go. Tried to mute the swears. Um, but that was insane. And so let's take a look at the shockwave here. So the Wikipedia page has a great, um, illustration from, or not illustration. They're, they're showing the goes west, um, mid-level water vapor. And once it fully loads, you can clearly see the shockwave just zooming across the planet. So they've sped this up where essentially one frame is every 10 minutes. And, and so you can see, here's America up here for context. And my goodness, I have just never thought I'd ever see anything like that on GOES 17, so GOES West. And if you'd like to look a little, I, yeah. I also put a link there in your spreadsheet from, uh, you said it was one of the better shockwave videos that um, came from a Facebook page. So it's there if you want to show it, but you can move on to. Uh, from a Facebook. It's right below it. Though. Okay. It's right there, shockwave, Facebook watch. Oh yeah, yeah. So this one here, yeah, let me show this one first. Uh, because here's uh, another representation. So this video is from the um, Michael over at Science Out There. And so he did some compositing the day of the eruption. And so he essentially took the, the infrared satellite and he duplicated it. So he had one satellite on top of the other, and then he shifted one frame over. So one frame was 10 minutes ahead of the other, and then he subtracted one frame from the other. So when you subtract it, you should normally just get white, I believe, just white, if the pixels are the same. But if they're shifted, then you're gonna see black or a darker gray. So this one also shows the the satellite show up, or sorry, the, um, the shockwave show up as well. So, and he goes into great detail about that data and how all of that works. So I'd recommend that you check that out in the chat there when you get a chance. And uh, all right, now let me pull up yours. So this video I seems to... I tried to figure out who posted it, but I really couldn't tell there. It's well, I mean, all yeah. of this is coming from government satellites anyway. So um, this, I believe, is a composite taking that difference data, the subtracted data, and then overlaying it on the color information so this one is oh, i forget which satellite that is but yeah. yeah you can see it way more clearly with this composite because i think they're this... compositing um the um that same thing over the color satellite because this isn't showing day or night so this is using infrared clouds and stuff to oh my goodness yeah this is this is probably the himarari um I'm pulling it up now, the Himerari satellite. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. So, and apparently I was flabbergasted by this. Alaska, of all places, apparently heard the boom. So let me zoom back here. <clears throat> yeah, Pi, why weren't you in Alaska to go hear the boom? 
Yeah, this is absolutely nuts. <laughs> Nearly 6,000 like, miles. You had like 15 hours to get there, right? According um, to multiple social media reports and confirmed by Alaska Volcano Observatory infrasound recorders, the Hunga Tunga eruption was heard in Anchorage and Furbanks at 3.30 and 4 a.m. local time. Fairbanks. So, <laughs> <laughs> Which that's crazy because we're over here in Colorado and that doesn't look like it's much of a difference. So, um, and so they said I in mean, this I, Twitter post. I hear, I hear booms all the time, but I just assume it's my military base. So I don't think it's coming yeah. from a volcano. Yeah, this yeah. they were able to confirm <laughs> it with the um, the actual sound data. So... <laughs> The fact that it wasn't heard closer to the events, the National Weather Service says, suggests that there was an atmospheric component that caused a local or regional bouncing of the sound waves off some portions of the atmosphere. Just speculation. Cool. People will be researching this event for many years. So nice. that's the only thing that I can think of is that there was something that focused sound waves uh, more precisely in that location. So, however, here at our National Weather Service, we did get a pressure drop. So you can see up here, we're hitting about, we're at 1,028 millibars here, and then we go up to 1,029, and then it drops by a, about a millibar, like almost instantly. So, Amber, if you were That's looking nice. at your weather station, you probably could have saw it drop one millibar to... Or bar, yeah, or whatever. I was, whatever you. I thinking. was at least. Well, th does it say what time the millibar, the bar barometric pressure dropped? This was at from six twenty-five to six thirty Mountain Time. Yeah, so you would have had to be up at six twenty-five, having known that it sorry. erupted, and know what time you would have had to calculate the speed of sound from here to the volcano and figure out what time you would see the pressure drop, but. <laughs> <laughs> So, hey, I like watching my barometric pressure. That would have been that would be see. cool. There was we saw a really cool. We wanted to buy a weather station, but at the at the thrift <laughs> store, but it was broken. So I'm like, well, yeah. now it explains why it was donated. But why donate a broken weather station? I do not know. Mm -hmm. But it, yeah, it was the one you put on your roof. I would have bought it like that. Yeah, next time. my next birthday, you can give me one. Mm -hmm. Right, right. Then we can tell when a bomb cyclone is headed our direction. Bomb cyclones, yeah. Speaking of which, we should probably talk about the bomb cyclone at one point too. The bomb, yeah. There is apparently a bomb cyclone out there, and this oh, ruins. Say, Some of you might be affected. Twenty-eight. This is the current thing. All righty. Yeah, actually, let's go ahead and transition. Oh, is this the sound? I think I did find the sound. Oh, okay. So, yeah, here's another clip of the sound from Mr. Combs six. Five seven in Fiji, and so here's another boom. Actually, let's look that up. Let's see how far away this is. Um, Google Earth. We will come to this. Uh, check out these tornadoes Lorne here in a nine. second. Lorne, Lorne 09 says we heard the blasts here in New Zealand. Oh yeah, I bet that that would be so cool to hear it. Like, oh, I would be geeking out if our security cameras picked that up. All right, so where's <laughs> Fiji? Okay. Right. So Fiji is pretty close. Looks like, I think that is north of them. Yeah, let's go sometime. I wanna go, I wanna go play it. Tonga, Tonga, Tonga. Okay, yeah, so <laughs> they're pretty close. Uh, and So Lorne09, if you heard the blast, were they, miles. I assume it was after dark, so you'll have to let us know. Um, yeah, the sun set almost right away after the eruption. Mm-hmm, right. Um, let's hear, so let's listen to this thing. Oh, two booms. <laughs> Boy. That was cool. Let's play that again. Whoa. Kaboom. That's really cool. Okay. Yeah. So that one, this is an orid. Yeah. This one looks like a legit. Well, okay. Video credit and it needs whatever. I thought that was the original quality. Maybe that's why the quality is so bad. Anywho. <laughs> All right. Let's take I mean, a it, look. It, 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 Kind of sounds like the military base here in town doing some blast training down the hill, but. 
Yeah, let's take a look at what's happening over off on the East Coast. I don't have an article or anything brought up of the... Ooh, you're going to pull up the bomb cyclone. So we we looked it up. What what? How do you know it's a bomb cyclone? And I finally got it memorized. A bomb cyclone is it drops at least 24 millibars in 24 hours. 24 in 24. So millibar bars on the barometric... <laughs> your barometric pressure so um yeah we're we're hoping for another bomb cyclone to hit us someday because they're kind of fun i mean <laughs> they're fun if you stay at home and sit by the fire oh man i was hoping to see it wait was this already supposed to have happened because I think it's today oh wait here we go. hey if you're in the northeast well the snow. i'm not yeah okay i'm not seeing anything on the satellite yet so i'm not exactly sure when this is supposed to happen I mean, I guess we could take a look at the forecast, see if it, it is supposed to. It might be on Saturday. Um, they're gonna, they're calling it a nor'easter. Gotcha. So it hasn't happened yet. All right. Well, then let's take a look and see what the GFS is showing. Uh, I will come. It's to deliver heavy snow, wind, and lots more snow. I already said that on the East Coast. Blizzard conditions. Ah, and all these pop-up ads oh there it is yeah <laughs> okay yes that there it is i'm seeing it so we'll have to see less than two days remain before the major snowstorm rocks the northeast so uh go get your bread and your milk that's what us in colorado do if you're in hawaii go get your spam <laughs> and i'm trying to think what else hawaii goes and gets i love how but, well, there's I love how the YouTuber Ryan Hall, y'all, he says that he's like, um, enjoy your milk sandwiches. <laughs> yeah, Pi said that to me this week. I was like, what are you talking about? <laughs> it's so it true, though. Although apparently um, they're, they're also having a hankering for hamburger at this time of year. Well, yeah, at least here in Colorado, there's no hamburger on the <laughs> shelf right now. But uh, yeah, <laughs> I guess they said the word snow and we got like a half inch here and people bought all the hamburger but don't be like pie if you're in the northeast and don't be like i'm gonna drive my prius out in the middle of the oh, it's fine it's fine i knew i had a sister with a truck nearby so. well <laughs> next next week if the nor'easter does some good damage we'll show you maybe we'll show you some bomb cyclone footage from colorado in mm -hmm. 2019 right right okay and that reminds me i could have sworn I had some tsunami footage here, and yep. did I not Wait. put it in the dock? Where is this? Where is this? I mean, you should, you showed us nice pictures. Yeah, where is the tsunamis? I I forgot. I totally forgot. I need to show some tsunami video. Okay, yeah. So here's one, um, all the way up in Oregon. So um this was um the, the the local news station channel two up there was sharing it and so here's one coming into the bay all the way in oregon told y'all told y'all that you really quick oh man i it seems kind of dumb like knowing what tsunamis can do but man i probably would be down there too like Knowing that I'm like what six thousand miles away. Told you. I mean, you don't have to go down there. Just fly your drone over there. Oh yeah, but the sound though, you'd want to get the sound. Oops, that is not. I did not copy and paste the right thing. Uh, okay, and copy, copy link. All right, we do not need to go to Fuji again. So that's where this video is. And so I found this particular spot on um, Oregon. So. This explains, you can see why the waves were noticed there. So <clears throat> let's go ahead and zoom way over <laughs> here. And this is where the tsunami came into. So it was this nice bay here. Looks like a perfect funnel. She was filming it about here. <clears throat> and so the wave would have funneled in through this area and kept funneling down so that would have made a higher wave as it finally got to at, at at this point this is like the road and the trail that you can see there so that is what the um so that was really something there's lots of tsunami videos out there and all over but i think those what we've shown here is definitely the cream of the crop so 
Anywho, shall we move on to the... Ooh, what's this? Florida what's this Tornadoes? Video? Wait, wait, I might have one more video. Oh, no, I never... Oh, wow. So, yeah, okay, one last one last thing. Here's a video clip um, from after the, um, the eruption. So, this was posted on January 18th. So, it's definitely very steamy. Though there looks like they're pretty close to the island, or at least what's left of the island, because a lot of it yeah. just went it's straight nasty. into the ocean. So I wanna, wonder yeah, if you look at that. Look here. at that. That looks like a it's a rotating updraft too. I wonder if you stuck your atmosphere. hand if you stuck your hand in the water right there, I wonder if it would be hot. This is other tsunami footage, so <clears throat> If what? Oh, if it would be... Oh, I don't know. It would probably would depend on the ocean currents. So I'm sure at some point, uh, if you could figure out which way the ocean is falling, then I'm sure it would be pretty warm there as well. So, so maybe maybe it's not like a lava flow under the ocean like some of the volcanoes. Maybe it's more explosive. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All righty. Let's dive into this Fort Myers tornado. So. We just need to bring Daddy Pie onto this podcast sometimes so he could talk about the geology of the world. Oh, the geology. Right. Yeah. So, anyway. Fort Myers. Here is the tornado captured by Sidney Rossman on Twitter. And so, this right now is a water spout, but this doesn't look like any ordinary water spout here. It's so cute. <laughs> so... She's just filming it from the shore here. It just looks like it's hanging out there, you know, not really wanting to bother anyone and off of Fort Myers. But like, I mean, hey, this looks like a supercellular tornado because we're pretty far away, but it does look like there's a clear slot over here on the left. It's a little bit difficult to see if we were closer, we'd probably be able to see it wrapping around the tornado. But there's some other clouds that are kind of interfering a little bit into it. So, but before we get into the rest of the clips, um, I've got an article here from Jacksonville tornado there taken from... Well, Jacksonville, Florida. It's not called Jacksonville. Sorry, that, yeah. Well, that's where the article is from. Yeah, it didn't take place <laughs> there. And so... You're right. It took... Fort Myers is on the south uh, west side of Florida. Jacksonville's way northeast. Mm -hmm. But um, at least six tornadoes were reported in southwest Florida on Sunday as a powerful winter storm system moved <laughs> Winter <the> storm <laughs> I'm going to Florida next week. I want it to be Have warm. Fun. No. They said that there's going to be falling lizards again tomorrow. What? Um, it's going to get so cold, the iguanas are going to fall out of the trees. Yeah, yeah. They're not dead. Re read just the dead. article. Just read. According to the National Oceanic and the Atmospheric Administration, the no. five tornadoes were reported in Collier County on Sunday morning, and another were reported in Lee County where an EF2 tornado reportedly touched down. A sixth tornado was confirmed by the National Weather Service in Charlotte County. Hey, at least they have counties easy to pronounce here. The NBC2 in Fort Myers said Monday five of the tornadoes have been confirmed by the National Weather Service and an EF2 and the EF2 strength tornado that hit near Fort Myers was the strongest to hit the area since 2016. The first oh, reports about funnel clouds started coming in early Sunday morning with a flurry of tornadoes reported starting at 9.20 in the morning until 9.50 a.m., according to NOAA. Oh, there it is. National Weather Service said the EF2 tornado near Fort Myers that touched down in Iona at 7.45 a.m. had peak winds of 118 miles per hour, was 125 yards wide, and injured three people. In Charlotte County, an EF1 tornado ripped uh started as a water spout around 6 20 in the morning before moving on shore and had peak winds of 110 miles an hour and about 50 yards wide videos of the tornadoes ripping across the area were posted on social media along with the damage left behind mm -hmm. yeah and so this is about where the tornado was hanging out in the ocean so it, interesting that it formed before it impacted this island. What's that island called? I, I'm not super familiar with Florida. Um, with, oh, was that it? 
uh, mm-hmm. national, whatever, whatever island that is. <clears throat> so <laughs> we've got a I few more that. clips here. And uh, uh, nope, that's a tsunami clip, not a tornado clip. Let's pull this one up. And we'll come to that one in a second. Let's see, is this, oh, wow, look at that clip. Uh, wow. That's Sanibel cr- Island? That could be it. Or Pine Island. I kind of wanted, Sanibel is supposed to be the best seashell island in the state. And I was tempted to go down there, but it's a long drive. Gotcha. Yeah, so Sanibel, Sanibel is the island that curves down below, and then the one that's more up and down is, um, is Pine Island. Gotcha. Oh yeah. So here's the here's the one that I wanted to do. So this was posted on Instagram uh, by uh, Instagram user Stangram2017. So and he got a great shot of it here from a skyscraper. So he is filming. Let's see. Where's that? Where's that skyscraper? It shouldn't be too hard to find. It should be <laughs> sticking out like um, somewhere there somewhere cool. where's the uh right here here it is so he's filming it from this building here so i had an excellent view of the tornado coming on shore and so i got this one it's just chilling there you know <laughs> man it's starting to look like it wants to produce a wedge so as it got closer to shore it just kind of got a little um beast looking and so <laughs> Yeah, here, let me put it in full screen. Or can I put it in full screen? It's Instagram. Can I zoom in on it? Yeah, I can zoom in on it. There we go. Just hanging out there. I'd be a little bit worried. I'd be like, that thing better not come towards me. So, all right. So, uh, let's see. Vortex Chaser. I have a question for you guys. If a water spout is near shore, should you get closer to it or go away from it? <laughs> what do you think, Amber? If you see a water spout coming on shore, what should you do? <laughs> I would go towards it. I would what? run away. No, I wouldn't. That's dangerous. Yes. Yes, water spouts like, it's, are tornadoes. It's to our, let's go get our little speedboat and run it through there. Or let's fly our drone into it. Oh, that'd either. be fun. And so this is when so I was on shore. So this is when it's doing... Last eating. time... So our last time we were at the beach, Pi didn't bring his drone. He's like, there's nothing to film with just at the beach with my drone. That's I was like, you can get whales. And the last time get... I brought it to the beach, it stopped working. Oh, Man, yeah. what is screeching through the... Yeah, I guess that's, that's wind. Incredible. So, ow, man, yeah, that thing is ripping things up there. So, based on the position of the houses, um, it's really ominous hearing someone praying in the background, too, on that video. So, he's filming from over this way, matching it up with the houses. So, the tornado was going through... These are These are kind of small houses. What are these... These aren't mobile homes, are they? Uh oh, those might be. Yeah, like that's all that was hit were mobile homes. Oh, lovely. <laughs> that, I guess is that all that people can afford? There's <laughs> housing prices that crazy. Well, if you if you want to live by the beach, you know, it, it's a it could be their second home or, but from the damage footage I saw, it felt like a lot of mobile homes were hit. See, do they have any photos uploaded here? One photo here. But, you know, it's not terribly, like, it, hurricanes rip through every so many years, so it's way cheaper to replace a mobile home mm-hmm. a full-priced home. <laughs> I think it's actually kind of smart to have a mobile home in Florida. Yeah. If it floods, no big deal. So just get a new This thing one. just kept going. Like, uh, here, let me just show you... Um, as I'm just scrolling through Facebook, I'll just save everything that I might want to cover here on Sky Pie News. And so there's just video clip after video clip here that just kept showing up in my feed of this thing. This is what happens when a tornado goes through a populated area. You just get so much to choose from. And one of the um, best videos that I saw was Live Storm Chasers picked it up. The Close Encounter here. And so this is interesting because you don't normally see palm trees getting ripped to shreds here. So <laughs> that's a good. Point. 
like this guy here is just Dude. filming and <laughs> Yeah, yeah, get away. There we go. And he gets away, like you, like you should. But yeah, those. If you're seeing palm trees, branches getting ripped, I think um, usually like a category four, maybe uh, definitely an a, an e, uh, category five can rip up pulp. five. But usually yeah. 2019. 2018. Uh, can and, can you uh, say that again? Uh, apparently OBS uh, disconnected for a few seconds there. OBS. Um, I was just watching footage from Hurricane Dorian that sat over the Bahamas for uh, two and a half days, September 1st to September 3rd. I think it was 2018. And uh, that was, they said, sustained winds of 185 mile an hour winds with gusts up to 220. And there you saw palm trees getting ripped to shreds. But it was like no house was safe in that kind of wind. It didn't matter how well it was made. They were just Actually, destroyed. So it it's really interesting watching this tornado because they said the tornado was, what, 180, 130 mile an hour winds? Yeah, for an EF2. Um, Kelton, you can correct me if I'm wrong <laughs> on that. But I, I can scroll back up here and see what I read earlier. Uh, but the Dorian was like, more wind than this tornado it's yeah so amazing. here are the tornado trackers uh so when hurricane michaels you see look the palm trees are just like not giving up a, a little rip they're just they don't care <laughs> like the whole and they can well you lose their leaves Oops. but then they're this is supposed to be not for even. broadcast sorry whoopsie 65 million views wow man kudos to them that's amazing so. Yeah, so the EF2 tornadoes in Fort Myers just hit 118 mile per hour winds. So Dorian was 180 mile per hour winds. It's just amazing. To yeah, think so the two and a half year long tornado. So it looks like that the majority of other tornadoes were pretty weak, and it looks like there was <laughs> just a, a couple of. Um, ring camera shows bottom of skinny tornado moving. Oh, yeah, I saw that video. I, I'm not sure where that is, though. Anywho. Um, let's see. Is the Tampa Bay... Yeah, so here's... This is the closest thing that I could find to a survey. I wasn't able to find it on their website. If you don't catch their headlines soon, it's super hard to find these surveys. So um, the preliminary EF2, peak winds, 180 miles an hour, max width, 125 yards, um, three injuries, and then the EF1 got up to 110. So pretty close, only eight miles per hour difference between the two, but that, wait, what's that? Is that it? Oh, that's a boat on the sidewalk. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> okay, yeah. Boating I think boat. Boats are definitely supposed to be on the water. <laughs> Not in the air. Uh, yeah, so I'm going to Florida soon. I don't want one of these to rip through. While if I'm it there. does, like, get good video of it. And, and hold your camera horizontally, please, so that way it shows You want to send your drone with me? I'll, I'll, I'll My drone barely works. Drone right now that's good it's like it's like the only crazy. thing it's good for right now is flying it into a tornado it like it might it, it might like tilt a little bit randomly as it's going into the tornado but i think it'll be doing a little bit more tilting than that once it's in it so it, <laughs> i think it won't matter that much so i need a new drone no i you don't I, I will buy a new drone once that one gets destroyed and <laughs> so all righty, um, Sister Pie, shall yeah. we move on to our... Actually, yes. well, Annie is asking, will you continue your ongoing quest to fly your drone into a tornado since we're on the subject? Oh, yes, definitely. Okay. Like, um, I'm... I just want to see that footage so much. Not necessarily what's in the tornado, but the moments just leading up into it and it starts tumbling around inside. That's what I really want to see because um, it's what he lives for that's what he dreams of on a daily basis <clears throat> oh yeah anyway, kelt he... yeah kelton how far away was this tornado from you i forget which um where in florida you live so but yeah he's saying in the chat that these setups are the worst to chase they're always in metro areas first thing in the morning <laughs> yeah like at 8 a.m <laughs> 
<laughs> of course. Yeah, that, we're not used to that out here in the West. Things take their time. They bake. They start. Yeah, we need uh, the atmosphere needs to bake out here for it to work. But out there, you got the warm <laughs> tropics. It doesn't matter what time of day it is. So. <laughs> All right, let's move All on right. to our last topic of the day. Back. So. Yeah, covered that little bomb cyclone. So back to Colorado always has a few surprises, right? Mm-hmm. We oh, yes. just never really know when Colorado is going to be uh, in the news or what is going to be in the news. But um, I'm going to pull up an article here that I can mm-hmm. read for From our you. local station, KKTV. Yeah, I don't think they've talked about how many cars yet, but um, this afternoon... I actually saw my sister-in-law post this first. She's like, I-25 is close. We have one interstate through Colorado Springs, north to south, Denver to Pueblo, I-25. So if anything happens on this interstate, it's closed down. Um, So today they predicted some snow. They said one to three inches of snow. We have yet to have a big snowstorm. Um, Yeah, Pi, there's another link there, too. Yeah, no, I'll pull it up when you start reading. Driving by. But... um, yeah, so south of us actually got more snow. Normally, it's between it's here cool, and yeah. Denver that gets all the snow. But I-25 was closed between Pueblo and Fountain. Fountain is like a southern suburb of Colorado <clears> Springs. <throat> mm-hmm. Due to a series of crashes and deteriorating road conditions, at 3.11 p.m., CDOT, Colorado Department of Transportation, provided a brief update stating the highway had reopened and soon after a oh, semi-jackknife near PPIR... PPIR. I think that's the Pikes Peak. Uh, it's like a racetrack. Ro- International Road. Thank ro- you. Ro- yes. A ra- road. Ro- <laughs> yeah. As of 3.25 p.m., the less left lane was blocked and traffic was giddy- was getting by on the right lane in the shoulder. At that time, traffic was still backed up for miles. At 4.15, all lanes were back open. Northbound side of the interstate was first closed between mile marker 125 and 128 for a 10 to 15 car crash at about noon. According to the state trooper, a slew of vehicles first collided at mile marker 127, then an oncoming semi added to the pileup. Following that crash, CDOT began closing a two mile stretch of interstate between Fountain and Pueblo for safety closures before announcing it was shutting down the entire northbound lane between mile markers 104 and 128. That's a long stretch of road. Road conditions are expected to be poor heading into the afternoon due to a blast of snow in the region. Um, Now, Pi, this reminds me of last week when they closed the road right by my house. That was fun to watch. Oh, yes. I, I... Uh, I live on a hill, and uh, our brother Pi lives at the bottom of the hill with his wife and two kids. And he said, he called us up and said, cars are starting to crack into each other, come down the hill, smack into each other. And so uh, Pi was actually uh, not at home at that time, so I walked down the hill with my dog. And there you go. And uh, I got a couple cars trying to make it up the hill. (laughs) This guy was coming up the hill. He's decided to do a U-turn. As he's doing the U-turn, he just starts sliding sideways down the other side. I felt so guilty filming this. Like, he started spinning out right next to me. And I, like, put the camera down at one point. I was like, I really should push him. But... Um, it was like sheer ice. I didn't think my boots would have traction, so I just filmed him. (laughs) That car is just, like, waiting. (laughs) (laughs) So, police actually went right by my house at the top of the hill, and they closed down. Um, this is Flint Ridge Hill here in Colorado Springs. They closed down the hill until they could get a plow to come through. So, that was a first. I've lived in this house ten years, and I've never actually seen them. (laughs) Wee! And again, no, hardly any snow. It just was warmer the day before, so it got wet, and then it instantly freezes, and we get people sliding down hills. So you can see at the bottom of the hill there are a couple police cars. That's where our other pie's house. So brother pie's it got pies. rather snowy outside <laughs> since uh, earlier today. Each other at the it was kind of a wet <laughs> snow, and um, figured that it was anyway, just a squall. Um, and, uh, sorry, Jigubi, yeah, so, uh, Jacob's talking over you. Well, 
Oh, oh, too too slow. Slow. oh no, 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 no. no. Sorry about that. I could fast, can't hear the video. Buddy, you're going too fast. You can't hear the video. Oh, darn. That's okay. I was going to ignore it till the end. I'll tell you that for next time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> what are you doing? Why are you trying to move? Yeah, so he's trying to get unstuck there. So they're at the bottom of the hill filming this Let's... across the street. So. <laughs> yeah, I forgot he got video from his bedroom. So mm -hmm. funny. Yep. That was funny. Oh, and um, Kelton responded back saying that he was near his house under one of the warnings near Odessa, Florida. So, huh? Odessa. He could have yep. almost that, could have looked outside and seen it then. <laughs> if so, Kelton, can you can you get footage of the lizards falling out of trees? What? Because we always wanted to see that. <laughs> okay, maybe you're not far enough north. I'm not sure where Odessa is. But. Mm hmm. <laughs> Hey, it's a real issue. A real issue, yeah. So. Alrighty. Well, that's all that we have for this time. And so I'll be posting another storm chasing video here pretty soon, maybe within the next week. And so, oh man, I'm not sure how I'm going to get them all posted before this next storm chasing season. No! <laughs> I'm going to do my best, though. going to get as many posts as I can. Maybe? Who knows? You can do it. You can do it. Maybe. I could get some posted or uh, edited and then I can post them during storm chasing season. So that way people have a time to uh, check it out and whatnot. That would be interesting. Hmm. <laughs> Julian did ask a question back to our slippery videos. They asked, uh, did it get slippery because of snow? Yeah, it snowed lightly that day. And yeah, we don't get much ice fast. around here, so, but... Even today, my, yeah. my wheels were spinning a little bit um, when I was yeah, trying to just, get up. So We get so warm during most of our week, and then it, we get like two days of cold. Mm -hmm. And so the pavement melts everything until the sun goes down, and then it just freezes as soon as that sun goes down. So. It freezes. All yeah, righty. So, Pi, you need to be home next time so you can go down there and film with me. My hands were freezing when I was trying to get that footage. Wait a minute. We have more to talk about next week, so. I'll let you close this out. <laughs> right. <laughs> okay, so thank you for watching, everyone. We will see you again next time. And uh, yeah, until the next video. <laughs> Thanks for watching, guys. See ya.